So this is your log dog here. And this is very important. You won't always want to make sure it's nice and tight, as tight as it can be. Because if there's any play whatsoever in your log, you have a potential chance of uh, breaking a blade. These are your log supports. And two, you just want to make sure that they're at a good height. Um, when you're milling your lumber, you'll see when you have to raise and lower them. So with these motors, you just gotta let it warm up for about two to five minutes before you press the throttle, otherwise it will just die on you. So Derek's checked the fluids, everything's fine. Okay, so this water reservoir, we already showed what was in it, but the line runs down. When Derek presses that throttle, it activates where the water comes out of, which is a little spigot hose there. So that's where that hose ends up coming out of. And then it runs onto the blade. So as it cuts, it lubricates. Um, this is a pretty dry log, but for any sappy logs, you just don't want to risk snapping a blade, uh, which is having too much strain. So that's why you need some sort of lubrication in that water reservoir. So he's just measuring where he wants his first cut. I'll bring you around to the back where he can see. So this is just a little magnetized ruler and he's able to adjust to where he wants to cut. So that's gonna be his first cut there. And for this first one, we're just warming up the machine and we're gonna be taking off of uh, all the bark and we're gonna be milling this lumber. So to get the most out of our lumber, we don't go in with a plan. We'll literally take all the bark off of the log. We'll measure, so I have perfectly six inches by five and a half. So Derek wants some two inches, so we'll just do, I guess two, probably three two by sixes. One will be a little bit short, but we can live with that. So probably from what you've noticed, we cut a couple pieces with live edge, so the bark. So I'm the craftier person of the family, so I can definitely make use of these. So when you're removing the bark, you have options, obviously. You could take off all the bark you need in one swoop, or you can make little cuts like this. So these are three quarter inch, and then you can make use. So instead of the bark being discarded, um, you could actually get nice boards out of them for other purposes. And that can be used for a lot of different projects and it can also be used for some really neat siding or feature walls in your home as well. So these are our boards that we cut. So these are two inch. So we cut, if we're doing it two by six, it, it, it's a real <laughs> two by six. So a lot of these pieces look really, really thick. So a little bit of water is fine. Um, it's not going to soak your boards too much. It's obviously you just don't want it sitting in water. So this will dampen the wood a little bit, but it's worth it in the end to just have clean wood without all the caked on sawdust.
Once your boards have been cleaned off, it's important that you let them drip dry so you can lean them up against a building, just making sure that you're keeping them out of direct sunlight because sun and heat can crack your boards within a day. So once they're somewhat dry to the touch, we move them inside that outer building. This one looks cool. You want to do this one? Yeah. Okay. Can you roll it? Yeah, down? we'll just roll it down. Watch your feet. This is the bigger side. Watch your feet. <laughs> I don't roll it too much. Are those too much? Yeah, that's way too much. Uh, you need a lot of support for yeah, this. Yeah, I guess. So, you're going to have to leave off on a couple of shavings to be able to get down to that. Yeah. So, the important thing to remember here is just to let the blade do all the work. Take your time with your cuts, and you'll see when you have to cut a little bit slower when you're cutting through knots. An important thing to mention is your log choices that you're going to be using on your sawmill. So generally speaking, the best type of wood that you would want is to cut green. Uh, that way you know that there aren't any, there aren't going to be any bug holes in them and it's fairly decent, decent wood. The only thing with that is when you cut trees down green, ideally you want to be cutting them in the winter. So in the winter, the sap isn't... Uh, running through the trees so that when you make lumber from that wood there's less sap going to be in your lumber cuts and it will take less time to actually dry out. So there's that way. The wood that we're cutting here is actually salvaged. Um, so it had been cut off of one of our major highways in our province and it had been drying out for a year and it was basically just stacked so from there it had dried out we just cut them into eight foot lengths and we brought them back the only thing with this wood we noticed is some it like some had started cracking on the ends and it, some of them also had bug holes in them so you just have to watch for that when you're bringing back your green wood it's important that the ends are sealed so i've read that you can use latex paint I'll just leftover latex paint, you can use beeswax, any sort of sealant that you're protecting the wood so that it doesn't dry out and crack if you're letting it sit out in the sun. Another option as well, so if you're wanting to cut lumber that's fairly dry already, is you can actually cut down dead standing trees on your property. The only thing is you'll have to be very careful with the trees that you choose, just making sure that they're not too buggy. Um, or eaten up by bugs, woodpeckers, and all that stuff. Um, but we've done that, and it worked perfectly fine, and it takes just, you know, a couple days, and you have usable lumber fairly quickly. With the green, uh, green logs that we're cutting, um, generally, so these ones in particular will take probably about two weeks to dry out. If you're drying out a green, the green lumber, from a fairly fresh tree, then it could take up to one to two months. And again, that depends on the cuts too and the thickness of the cuts. And it's just important that you're storing them properly, like I mentioned before, in a shaded spot and it's covered. So the big thing is just making sure that it has adequate airflow so it's able to dry out, no sun, and then you wanna be able to um, put spacers in between each board that you cut to allow air to get to every single part of the lumber that you cut as well. Here's the difference here between something we've 
we didn't wash off so the sawdust is still stuck to the lumber which isn't a big deal if it's just your dimensional cut lumber you could take just an orbital sander and just sand it right off but if your goal is to get and produce a nice live edge it does make a huge difference when you rinse it off so down here is something so these ones here we rinsed off with water so you can see there's no sawdust residue on here but every once in a while you have to open up a machine and this is what you'll find